srotas and they come out okay that is the second category and you can see the third category the pratishaya vadam prati abhimugam that is they are being pushed out against the normal flow of vata so they are being pushed out so vadam the discharge is mentioned here is driven against the action of vata normal vata that is the importance of pratishaya so that is why susruta has mentioned pratishaya the last where initially he had categorized the simple simple diseases and then he had come taken it into the most complex one what has the ashtangradi added he made it everything very easy first of all because uh, if you t target uh, see the biggest disease and treat it first everything will come under control that is why he has uh, explained everything has reversed it he had made pratishya as the first disease okay now see the rhinitis versus rhinorrhea if you see the pratishaya and the penasa, these are the two words which always makes us a confusion. Pratikshanam shayate or vatam prati abhimukam shayogam. And that is something which is going against the movement is called as pratishaya. Okay, so here it is being pushed out. And penasa is penam sthulam api. That is whichever is in a very severe condition is called as penasa. So you have pratishaya and penasa. So I would like to call pratishaya as rhinorrhea and penasa as rhinitis. But that is not the stage. You can see a difference of opinion that is there again. Both these are same. So you can see that uh, penaso atra pratishaya samana tandra darshanat. So I will give you an analysis of this. That is, you can name a disease pratishaya or penasa. Both are same. You better name it is a penasa if it is very severe. If it is normal rhinorrhea, go for a word pratishaya. Okay. Rhinitis, rhinorrhea, everything is pratishaya. Rhinorrhea is only something is coming out of nose. Rhinitis is you have an inflammatory process happening and the cilia is driving out the kaba, that is rhinitis. Okay. I hope uh, you are understanding it, right? If there is at any point, if you are not understanding, please uh, raise your hand. I will be happy because I don't want to present uh, like this and uh, what you say, radio, that is what we call. I don't want to become that. Okay. <coughs> Now, prognostic research. So, I, sto I told that the disease starts with an apinasa. Okay. So, we have an apinasa. Now, what is the apinasa? Again, the uh, Susruta is very good, clearly told her. Bru yat pratishyaya samana lingam. So, he there, he had told that. I will explain this in detail. We will have a later side of apinasa. Just understand this prognosis now that you have pratishyaya samana lingam. That is apinasa. It can have two pathophysiologies, that is two course. Either it uh, goes to a stage of Brahmshatu, where you have a Pitta Prakopa, where the person uh, undergoes Pitta Prakopa Karna. Please listen to this, don't uh, write all these things, just listen, understand. I will we'll give you the slides of this, you can take it out. Okay. So, if the person undergoes a Pitta Pitta Tva, that is Pitta Prakopa Karnas, it goes into a stage of Brahmshatu. This you can see very clearly. You have a starting stage of uh, rhinitis where uh, you have a nasal obstruction. Immediately you go out and eat chili, pickles. You can see that uh, the thing that is coming your out of nose will be salty taste in your uh, this. That is what the, the disease is being told as Brahmshatu. Sandram Levanam Vidagdham. That is what is happening. And if you can see the treatment of Brahmshatu, it is also a local treatment. You do a very small treatment of uh, for the... Um, um, Brahmshatu. Even Apinasa also there are two kinds of teeth again. That is local treatment is told in Apinasa. Systemic is also there. I will, I will explain that. But uh, here you can understand that it is a starting stage. Or it goes to a Pratishaya Purva Rupa as Dr. Mitra had told. Pratishaya Purva Rupa. Then you have a Penasa. That is a bit uh, more advanced stage. Where you have Vata, Pitta, Kabha. Prati, that is why I made Pratishaya or Penasa. That is there. Sarva now, Sarva eva pratishyaya, dushtatam yanti upekshita. If you don't treat it or you maltreat it, both are there. If you don't treat it or maltreat it, they come into uh, dushta pratishyaya. And, and if dushta pratishyaya is also not treated, what will happen? It will finally end into Rajyakshma. That is why Rajyakshma treatment has already been included into the dushta pratishyaya treatment. That is why Rajyakshma has one lakshana as pratishya in it. Their pratishya is not only nasal dripping out of it, it is a complex syndrome that is happening. Why Raja, what is the specialty of Rajyakshma? It is Roga Anam Rajaha. It is the most severe condition that is happening in the body. So the same thing because it is a Prana Vayu Sthana, Prana Vayu maintains everything. It is an Udana Vayu Sthana. Udana Vayu gives you the energy. 
when all these things is gone what happened the person naturally uh, goes into an immunocompromised stage that is why in the last stage you have rasayana chikilsa that is being told or ojo vardaka chikilsa that is being done okay so the starting stage is a very sukhasadhya because it is a koshtagata vyadi and once you go progresses inside 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 it is uh, it leads into yapya or it leads into an asadhya stage because it enters into the madhyama marga okay now we have uh, crossed the first section now we'll go to the research section of uh, why the disease are being caused nari prasanga shiraso abitapo dumo rajah shita madhi pradapa sandharanam mutra purisha yoscha sadhya pradishaya nidana mukta okay um nari prasanga is a, a, it's a uh, for me i feel it's a bit quite funny but uh, um, for the patient it was uh, uh, difficult i had a patient uh, in lucknow the uh, the woman complained uh, to me that uh, uh, i i cannot live with this guy so i asked what is the problem he can't do it that's what uh, she told me so i asked her, what what is a no he we cannot perform on bed the moment uh, we start he just sneezes out like and he just goes so uh, i thought like it may be hysteric no it happens every day whenever whenever we prepare he has uh, uh, sneezing so this time i remembered our the beauty of our sloka nari prasanga there is something that is what ma'am uh, dr mitra had taken that is there is a honeymoon rhinitis whenever you have uh, uh, a vata prakopa vata something that is starting in the body some people manifest it as uh, pratishaya so you can you get patients like that also this is what you should remember okay stress and anger this is very easy you have on stage someone says that you are failed immediately you start crying no, water start coming from your nose isn't it you hear you hear that uh, um, you are desperate sometimes no nose gets blocked water comes exposure to cold this is very good and this also i had practically experienced when i was there in lucknow here there the temperature goes to 2 uh, degree and 1 degree you the moment uh, the cold season starts you can see that uh, water comes from your nose exposure to cold okay exposure to hot sun this also some people may have experienced the when uh, the sun when you are in sun you get uh, nasal drippings ajirnam this is very important ajirnam whenever you are treating whenever you're treating a case of pratishaya first see that uh, the person's agni is very good ajirnam ajirnam can also create uh, pratishaya excess in speech uh we i do not have any uh, findings on it or uh, maybe it stimulates the paranervous system that's why it is happening change in climate obviously what is happening there right now in kerala because you have very uh, episodes of uh, uh, sp- spouts of rain in uh, heavy, huge uh, uh, water hot climate so you can you can get all kinds of rhinitis there right now so change in climate altered sleep this is a very uh, important and interesting thing i was telling my wife uh, that uh, uh, you uh, get up early at uh, brahma muhurta because she is a uh, techie uh, they all uh, have their normal uh, brahma muhurta is around 6 to 7 uh, or 7 o'clock i was telling her that you get up at uh, 3 o'clock and uh, you start uh, seeing what is the benefit of ayurveda she did once and uh, as soon as she did it she started sneezing like anything and uh, she told that your ayurveda is uh, entirely utterly flawed is it no because they have a sleep cycle which is adjusted to them 4 6 to 7 i have altered that and I, when i made it to brahma murta uh, automatically vata prakopa had happened to them so whenever you are trying to change any habit of the person make it into a very small manner don't abruptly change it into a schedule so if you have a less sleep if you have a more sleep if you have an altered sleep all that can lead to pratishaya okay drinking cold water obviously you will be knowing this okay now this is the explanation that is there whenever you have an exposure that is uh, see you have uh, uh, environmental exposure or a physical stress uh, you have a parathyroid para uh, sympathetic system that is being uh, uh, stimulated which gives uh, vasodilation and excessive nasal secretion that is why pratishaya is happening okay same the same thing is being uh, given here xf effect of fear anger and nasal secretion the why it is being increased gastritis rhinitis 
now a new term has been coined that is whenever you eat hot and spicy food leading to water watery or mucoid discharge from the nose um, uh, while I, I did my ug from pankajagasuri i had been uh, like uh, we had been taught shalakya we went uh, i was uh, going to home my uh, sister came out uh, uh, crying like nose water from nose so the moment is like when we learn in our ug the moment when we see some signs in in persons immediately we get some diagnosis right maybe you you also experience it some person uh, walks like this uh, see there is a grudrasi patient going on right okay so similarly she was coming out uh, with uh, watering the nose or uh, i thought yeah you got a very good flu flu is common cold she just looked me like this what kind of doctor you are i was there in the kitchen i was cutting the onions i i got the watering of the nose so you have tikshna dravyas that is there that also stimulates rhinorrhea that is what is called as gustatory rhinitis you have tikshna dravyas you keep it in the mouth you keep it near to you water starts coming it okay so you have a gustatory intake of hot and spicy food now is this a new term that is there to ayurveda no you can see the lakshanas of katu katu ko brisha mudveje eti jihwagram chimi chimayati kanta kapolam sravayati mukha nasika akshika abhyam so water will come from the nose if you take katu it is a normal phenomena that is being told now it is beautifully termed as gustatory rhinitis okay now chakrat vega roda this uh, again i have got a case uh, when uh, we were now recently when i was there in trivandrum the person will complain get watery rhinorrhea if he does not go to his bathroom at normal time this is what the complaint he has given me he gets rhinorrhea if he does not go to a bathroom in his normal time so i asked him why don't you go my job is like that i may have to go at night i may have to go at day whenever i got i call so i have to postpone my normal activities and the moment i postpone my activities i get rhinorrhea so chakrat vega rodam is also very important in the you have a research paper on this you can see that uh, irritable uh, bowel syndrome and uh, uh, you have that uh, vasomotor rhinitis that is uh, rhinitis they both are linked together okay change in season obviously i have explained you can but i need to i need to uh, see the last look of this see dalhana has explained that the vata that is going into the nose okay creates kasa shwasa pratishaya and tvagindriya that is the cold air that is being hitting the skin creates what masurika jwara so if you want to protect yourself from a disease you cover yourself your whole body when there when there is a change of uh, climate you clap you cover yourself with uh, a mask put mask you will not get all these things okay now cold uh, weather induced rhinorrhea that's what i mentioned uh, when we were in lucknow we had this so there are two kinds of effect that is happening in this you have a hemostatic effect and you have a thermodynamic effect so what happens in a the hemostatic effect is that the dry air it is dry it is ruksha sheetha it uh, takes out uh, all the water from the nasal mucosa so what happens immediately body demands more and more uh, uh, water and uh, the nasal mucosa will be made more and more watery so excessive watery that that time excessive wateriness will happen that is first point second point is that when you might have experienced that whenever you go into a cold area you feel nasal block why that is happening as i told you that uh, from the minus or 2 degree the lower degree it is the air has to be heated to the normal body temperature you have only a very little area that is there so to make that enhance that more area the turbinates get swollen and uh, automatically there will be a nasal block okay that is natural and why water comes in this the water that is being the the air that is carbon dioxide that is being exhaled is uh, in a normal body temperature you have outside air which is at a cold temperature so that is the thermodynamic effect that is when they both meet together that is when hot air and cold air meets you have a uh, watering that is coming out so you can see that whenever you are in a cold water will be coming only from your anterior part nostril it will not come from your there will not be any post nasal drip nothing will come from out because at this area junction when water both these meet together you have rhinorrhea okay 
Now, this is the cold air induced rhinitis, that is whenever you have an exposure to cold, there will be a nasal mast cell activation, sensory system will be active, you have a cold energy ref reflex and then you have rhinorrhea. Again, effect of cold water, the same that is parasympathetic activation will be happening. Now, the secondary causes of rhinorrhea. That is here some cause will be there and because of that rhinorrhea is happening. You have an infection, because of an infection you have a rhinorrhea. So here what happens in infection is that whenever you are starting an infection to prevent that bacteria to go inside, the more mucus will be produced. That is why you have rhinorrhea. Emotional events that is already been explained. Fracture at the base of the skull, we call it as CSF rhinorrhea. Okay. Opioid withdrawal, you have a rhinorrhea. Side effect of oxygen intubation during colonoscopy. This is very important because uh, uh, these days colonoscopy, endoscopy, these are very common. You have to understand that whenever there is a colonoscopy and uh, there is oxygen intubation, there are chances that uh, they get rhinorrhea. You have to remember this. Hormonal changes, cluster headache and primary ciliary dyskinesia. That is uh, the cilia there inside the uh, epithelium. They don't move. It's a very, very rare uh, genetic disease. Okay, so we are leaving that. Now, Dushi Vishas, I would like to call this as Dushi Vishas because majority of the people who are coming to us uh, are Dushi Vishas. That is, as ma Madam told, you have uh, uh, people who are taking citrosine for a long time. Citrosine is not a treatment for the uh, allergic rhinitis. It's only symptomatic relief. So, the, it gets into as a Dushi Vishas stage because you are not treating the disease. It is as if like you are not treating the disease. You are only treating the symptom. So it's a Dushi Visha. Second prescription, that is second thing that is happening is that you have a viral rhinitis, immediately put on antibiotics. So unscrupulous prescription of antibiotics because when you give an antibiotics, your entire uh, uh, GIT, the entire microbiota, that is whatever uh, um, uh, cells is there in your GIT, they get died. So automatically Agni gets down. You get AMA production in your body. So that is also creating a Dushi Visha. Okay. All these creates Dushi Visha. Now, what is the basic categorization? So, now you can call all diseases of nose as rhinopathy. That is the term that is being used. Just like you have myopathy, you have retinopathy. All the diseases of nose is called as rhinopathy. It is being basically classified into inflammatory, degenerative, traumatic and malignant. Okay. Let me start with inflammatory as I told you. Now, the term there is nothing called specialty as rhinitis and sinusitis separately. Together, it is called as rhinosinusitis. So you have a running nose, nasal discharge, itching, sneezing and stuffy nose. The basic category, this has been told by Dr. Mitra, that is uh, we have an allergic uh, rhino conjunctivitis, sorry, rhino sinusitis. You have an infectious rhino sinusitis and you have a non-allergic uh, rhino sinusitis. If you see the infectious, three categories very similar, that is you have a viral, infectious, um, sorry, bacterial and fungal. And in non-allergic rhinitis, first one is a vasomotor rhinitis or idiopathic rhinitis. You have something called as NAS, non-allergic rhinitis with isnophilia syndrome. Non-allergic rhinitis with isnophilia syndrome. We have something called as NAS. This is all we saw earlier. Estrogen, that is a hormonal related rhinitis, drug-induced rhinitis, atropic rhinitis. We'll come uh, under later slides. Now, classification of rhinitis, rhinosinusitis. If it is less than four-week duration, that is for the first time the patient is experiencing less than four-week duration, it is an acute rhinosinusitis ARS. If you have a viral rhinosinusitis and you have a bacterial one in that. Now, if it is subacute, that is between 4 and 12 weeks of duration, it is subacute. And if it is chronic, that is greater than 12 weeks, it is chronic. So, in chronic rhinitis, you have uh, polyps that is being formed. Because whenever you have a rhinitis, there will be Bernoulli's phenomenon that is happening there. That is, when you have a constriction, the air that is just beneath that, that is when you move, the air moves, the constriction will create a negative pressure. So, it starts pulling the nasal mucosa. So, when you have a chronic rhinosinusitis, there is every chance that there is, there will be a polyp. So, there are two conditions, with polyp and without polyp. And uh, last one is a recurrent sinusitis, that is uh, three episodes of uh, rhinitis in uh, past six months. That is what we call. Okay. Now, uh, I have prepared uh, a chart from this. This is nothing of my contribution. It is, uh, uh, it is there in your uh, file. Uh, it is a, I, I would like to call it as a NACA chart. That is a NASA Gada Kabha Assessment Chart. NACA chart. 
It's very simple. You get a percent of rhinitis, you want to see the dosh of it. You can please take out the chart if it's possible. It's there with you. It's there in your file. Okay, it's, a, it's called as a Naka chart. See, all the lakshanas of uh, doshas I have, I have compared like this and you can go for the uh, diagnosis. Okay, suppose if a patient comes to me with, say, purulent nasal discharge. Okay, purulent, that is pus is coming out from the nose. Now you see in this where the pus is coming. You can see that the last point, the pus is there. Okay, see here is the pus. So it's the diagnosis is obviously Dushta Pratishaya. Puyopama Asita Rekta Gradida Sleshma Samsruti. You cannot see Puya in any kind of uh, other uh, Pratishaya Lakshanas. So the moment Puya is there, it is a Dushta Pratishaya. That is, uh, it has entered into the last stage or the severe stage. Okay, Dushta Pratishaya. Now, if someone asks me, I have a sneezing. So, where you can see the sneezing, you can see uh, excessive sneezing. That is more of a water predominant condition. And uh, I have severe itching of the eyes uh, and nose. You can see itching of eyes and nose is of a Rekta Prapradhana. So it's obviously a Rekta and Vata Pratishaya. Now if you see the treatment also, if you see, if you want to decrease the itching of the eyes and nose, you should uh, give something which is a Rekta Pitta Shamana to them. Just like Avipati Churna or Haridra Kanda or you should give a Virechana to them to make this all clear. And you can see that itching of the palate, Kandu, of the palate that is mukha comes under kabha to see the difference itching of the head and lips this is not my contribution this is from acharyas okay you can see all the text this is how it is being done so whenever you have rekta predominance understand that there is there is itching of the nose whenever you have excessive sneezing it comes to the vada pradhanatva when they, you have a cough when you have dyspnea, there is more of a kava pradhanatva. When you have edema, yesterday Dr. Praveen had shown an edema of the um, due to sinusitis, there is more kava pradhanatva. And the edema can be seen here also in Dushta Pratishya also you can see if that, that was a chronic case of um, sinusitis that he had told. So that, that is also Dushta Pratishya, you can see edema. Okay. And the most important is that the last line acute or chronic is this happening for the first time or is it recurrent the moment it is recurrent bhutva bhutva pratishyayo yo akasmad vinivartate it is uh, sannipata or uh, it is dushta pratishaya this you have to be very important very, very careful when it is uh, recurrent it either goes to a sannipata or dushta pratishaya okay so this chart you can use it uh, for diagnosing any any uh, case whether it is that now based upon the presentation doshas will differ suppose if the patient is because i had a patient uh, uh, who had complaint of uh, only cough and dyspnea her nasal discharge was very less so what will by my dosha happen it is a kabha pradana vata anubandha that's all we have a patient with excessive watering of uh, uh, nose and very little itching of the palate so it will be reverse. That is, it is Vata Pradhana Kabha Anubandha. Okay, this like the diagnosis will change. And halitosis, that is one more point. You have a halitosis, that is foul smelling come from the nose. That is called as halitosis. Hal Once the halitosis is there, the, it starts from the Rekta and Dushta Pratishaya. Rekta, Sannipata, Dushta Pratishaya. That is where you have the halitosis. Okay. Now, what are the common clinical conditions met? You have a rhinorrhea, nasal block, Sneezing, I, I think it's not visible for you, right? Okay. You have sneezing, headache, epistasics. You can see the last uh, lakshana. This is what being told in uh, our science. Sarveshu kruchra ushvasanam, peenasam, pratatam shutam, sa anunasika vaditvam. This is what is the common lakshanas of the nasal disorders. Okay. Now, evaluating the stage of rhinitis. Dr. Mitra had uh, already explained that clearly. There is a puro rupa where you have sneezing body pain, heaviness of head, horripilations, burning sensation in the nose. That is the Puro Rupa stage. Okay. So, sneezing, body pain, heaviness of the head in the starting stage. Okay. Now comes the Ama, Ama stage where the rhinorrhea becomes a bit thin. Okay. Rhinorrhea be becomes thin, but fever sets on. You have fever there. You have fever sets on. Loss of taste and smell and la lack of clarity of the voice so your voice is clarity is gone now the last stage is the pakwa where all the previous lakshanas has come down and 
there will be lightness of the nose and head and there will be lack of taste and smell but uh, we, uh, we have seen patients even with uh, good smell uh, and uh, uh, there is no problem with smell so when how we do clinically differentiate is that that's what the point she last told that is this is uh, what we say you I prefer to use a tissue paper in our o OPD whenever a patient comes to rhinitis you ask uh, you give the tissue paper to the patient ask her to sneeze take out the nasal mucus just close it and try to open it if it gets a very thin line to that that is if it uh, if it becomes like this very thin very thin line like this it is an amapratishaya it is an amavastha very easy to de determine if